You guys, today we are breeding snakes. We're gonna have a night vision camera view inside the tub so that we can check out some ball python courting behaviors. Welcome to the Python Green Room. You might be saying, hey Bob, you look like a young Clark Gable. What's with the jacket? Are you getting married? No, but it is date night tonight. I don't have a date. But he does. This is the inspector who you uh, may have met if you saw, I think my first video, yeah, my first video um, featured the inspector as the model snake. He is a male, obviously by me referring to him as a he. Um, and his street name is Coldplay, by the way, because he's all yellow, but he hates his street name. So we just call him the detective inspector or the inspector or whatever. Anyway, he has a date tonight with a lovely calico girl named Freya. Uh, we're going to talk about genetics a little bit. So we're going to, we'll, we'll discuss the genes that are, that are in her. Hi, baby girl. That are in her and in the inspector here. So I've mentioned before that this channel is all about ball pythons, the care of ball pythons, their behavior, and breeding ball pythons. This is my first year breeding, and I've said before that you will be on that journey with me. This is the first video on that journey, uh, although I have been pairing them a little bit already. This is the first time that it's going to be on video. Behind the camera is my brother Kent, who I think is getting more and more comfortable with snakes. Why are you making more of them? So what I've done is I've taken pretty much all of Freya's stuff out. I've removed her hides and removed her clutter. I've left a water bowl and a small piece of cork bark in there that I'm gonna to try to mount a night vision camera to. I've got two cameras. One is a little small uh, night vision spy camera that I bought. And the other one is uh, just an older Kodak um, camera thing. So I'm going to alternate between those two. As one battery dies, I'm going to switch it out for, for the other one. And we'll try to get, you know, a couple hours worth of footage and hopefully there will be some interesting stuff that I can cut into this video. Uh, the the non-night vision camera, I'm going to have to use flashlights on either side of the tub just to get a little bit of light in there and hopefully that'll work. So we'll see what happens. Hi folks, Future Bob here. I edit videos for Past Bob and correct any information that he's either omitted or just gotten completely wrong. In this case, he forgot to mention that you're going to see shed in the tub, and that is Freya's shed that was left in there. Some people will leave shed from another male to help get things going, but it also helps to leave the female's shed just in there so that the tub smells like her. So that is who that shed belongs to. We're going to go to the tubs here in a minute, but first he wants to talk about genetics. Very soon there's going to be an in-depth video on genetics, but today we're going to talk a little bit about genetics and maybe go a little bit deeper on banana just because we're dealing with banana uh, and that's a very unique gene. So right now with this pairing, we're dealing with between five and potentially nine different mutations. What, Kent? You don't think 2020 had enough problems? You're over here making mutant snakes? Mutation in this case means a gene that's changing the look of the snake. Why don't we breed murder hornets while we're at it? You gonna be okay? I'm fine. I fear for the safety of the community. I think Los Angeles can withstand a few ball pythons. I think Los Angeles can withstand a few ball pythons. One of the genes that we're dealing with is a dominant gene. All the rest are what we call co-dominant genes. They're actually incomplete dominant genes, and there's a difference between the two. In the ball python world, we refer to them all as co-dominant genes. Um, and we'll talk about the difference and everything in that other video on uh, going in-depth on genetics. But I'm going to refer to it as codom because that's what everybody else does. So I don't have a lot of snakes. I'm not a big breeder. I'm not even a big collector. I have a small handful of snakes and you're going to meet them all. And if you're watching my videos, you're gonna meet them all and, and you'll get to know them all. So let's talk about the genes. First of all, in the inspector that we know he has, there's some that we're just guessing on. So we know that he is banana, orange dream, inchy. Because banana is such a visually dominant gene, a lot of times it will mask 
other uh, more subtle genes. So he is very possibly super inchy rather than just inchy, but we're going to prove that out with the breeding. He's possibly super orange dream. That's really tough to tell. We can tell that he's orange dream, but it's really tough to tell if he's super, but he could be. Um, he also could have fire and or pastel in him. So we're dealing with all of those possibilities, the two possible supers and the possible fire, possible pastel, along with the three genes that we know he has. In Freya, she also has orange dream, which is really cool because that means we could potentially get some supers. And if he's super orange dream, we'll get a lot more supers. But orange dream is great in everything, whether it's a single gene orange dream or uh, uh, homozygous orange dream in its super form is awesome. So totally happy with that. Uh, so Freya is orange dream. She's also extreme gene. And that's a gene that I didn't know anything about until I acquired Freya. Uh, it's, it's ironically a very subtle gene. Extreme gene. Let's see it. Oh, oh. kind of looks like a normal. But it does some cool things to certain other uh, mutations. So it acts as a lightning gene, and it's it does this cool thing where it sort of makes drips down the side of the of the snake, like it looks like dripping chocolate down the side, which is kind of covered up because Freya is also calico, and she's a high expression calico, and that brings white up her sides. So where those drips would be is all whited out. Um, but there's also some striping, like a super extreme gene will will create almost an entire stripe down the dorsal. Uh, but she has a stripe, kind of a long stripe on her neck and a long stripe on her tail. And mixed with other genes, it, that striping does some different things. So we'll see what happens with that one because I just am not that familiar with it. Uh, and then um, Calico. The, Calico is the reason that I originally acquired hers because uh, I love that gene and she is a beautiful example of a Calico. So that's what we're working with. And all of those genes can mix together. The banana, let's talk about the banana really quick. Um, without going super in depth on it, the banana gene is tied to either the X or the Y chromosome. It's the only gene that, that does this. But what it ends up is, is we end up with, with snakes that are bananas being either male makers or female makers. So it's a snake that either makes all male bananas or they make, I think the, the female makers, um, eh, I want to say this correctly, but I think the female makers can, can do both. Um, but what happens is, so he's a male maker. His father was a banana. So when he acquired the Y gene from his father, that came with the banana gene. And, uh, or the Y chromosome from his father came with the banana gene. And so he's got a banana gene sitting on his Y chromosome. And every Y chromosome that he passes on will pass on a banana gene. Uh, if it was on his X chromosome, if it's a, if if he was a female and it and if he was a female banana, that X chromosome could either go to a male or a female, and that's why you could potentially have you could have a female banana that that is. Um, that produces both female and male bananas. So I think that's the that's the situation. If somebody uh, understands this better and I'm saying it wrong, please tell me in the comments. Uh, but anyway, he, presumably every male that the inspector produces will be a banana, and every banana that he produces will be a male. Uh, there are crossover events that happen, which I'm really hoping for because he's the only male in my uh, breeding stock here. And so every male that I get this year is going to be a banana. So I'm really hoping for a crossover event because I'd love to have a non-banana male. But I may have to buy into that. This guy, the worst at explaining things. A crossover event just means that something happens in the genetics where banana ends up on the other gender. Uh, or the gender that's supposed to have banana ends up not having it. That's about as far as I know of it, but it happens occasionally and it's rare. The inspector and Freya are both really great examples of their respective genes. And I think they're going to make stunning babies. So I've got the camera set up in there and uh, I hope that we capture things. I have, I have two different cameras and um, 
so you're going to get, if they both work, you're going to get footage from one that's in color, but kind of dark. And then you'll get footage that's, that's like night vision footage. That's kind of more black and white, but hopefully we'll, uh, we'll see some, some sort of courting action. So I'm just taking a look around your tub here and did you have a bad shed? Because there are pieces everywhere. No, that was a couple days ago and it was one full piece. He just put all these pieces in here for some reason. I don't, Hey, I'm not judging. That's, that's your business. Okay. Because it was one piece, but no, it's fine. It's fine. I'm just gonna check out your tub, sort of get an eye on the security here. Hey, watch this. Look, look how tall I can be. Look at this. Oh, that's really impressive. Wow. Yeah, thanks. That's just something that I've been working on. Anyway, it smells great in here. I actually quite enjoy the shed. Thanks, but it it was one piece, so... No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. It's, it smells great, so, you know. Well, thanks. I do like to keep my tub smelling good. Well, you do a nice job of it. Oh, thanks. I'm just going to wag my tail a little bit and um, help those pheromones. Oh, yeah, no, you do you. Look at this. Look how tall I can be. Ha ha, I'm very tall. Wow, you are. That's certainly impressive. So I guess it's up to me to do actual commentary. We'll make this real quick. Tail wagging means she's interested. She's spreading her scent around. She's leaving little deposits of scent and wagging her tail back and forth uh, to leave a scent trail. He's also leaving a scent trail, although you don't see it very much. But he's kind of uh, dragging his junk around, if you know what I mean. Um... And him rubbing up on her like that means that he's interested. If they were on opposite ends of the tub, that would mean a non-love connection. But these two obviously dig each other. Hey, Freya, uh, I have a question. Yeah? Do you know about a camera that's in here? Yes, I know. I was going to tell you that. Bob put a camera in here. I think he's a pervert. No. No, that's got to be just for security or something. I can't imagine. No, I think he's trying to record us and he's going to put it on the internet like a pervert. I'm pretty sure it's just a home security cam. Nothing to worry about. Hey, did you want to kiss? No. But you know what you could do, though, is rub my back a little bit. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm actually trained in the art. Oh, I can tell. That's nice. Thanks. I just, I have a kink in my back, so... Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I'll keep it totally professional. I appreciate that. I don't know what's going on with these flashlights. Yeah, I think he's out there. That's what I was saying. He's out there with flashlights. I think he's a pervert. I wouldn't go that far. Do you think... Do you think this tail wagging will be on the internet? Like, how does my tail look? Because what if, like, thousands of people see it? I've seen his YouTube page. You're in no danger of thousands of people seeing it. Oh, hundreds at least? You know what? I'm just going to itch my entire body because I don't have any arms or hands. No, go ahead. You can do that. And I'm going to do it on you, if that's okay. But I'm going to keep it totally professional. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. I'm comfortable with it. Thanks. Because I'm itchy. No, I get it. I get it. Oh, yeah. That camera is definitely recording. Oh, my gosh. Do I look okay? Because, oh, no, I think you look fine. Okay, I hope so, because I haven't even done my scales. These flashlights are crazy. I don't know. He's out there shining flat. Oh, jeez, I scared myself with my own tail. Oh, my goodness. I'm tail wagging like crazy over here. Yeah, I know. I love it. It's great. Thanks, but I'm trying not to slap my own face with my tail. I'm just going to keep rubbing the back of my tail on you because it itches no i know you've established that already that you had an itch haha <laughs> knocked the camera down now it can't see us what you knocked it down that's what if i get in this position 
Can it see me now? Oh, I think he's got a new camera up. Oh my gosh, what a pervert. He has all the cameras. I'm just going to wag my tail. Oh yeah, oh, you're right. No, that is a camera. Wow, he does have a lot of cameras. Swish, swish, swish. Swishing my tail. Swish, swish, swish. I'm just swishing my tail. Swishing my tail back and forth in the tub. Swish, swish, swishing my tail. It's a nice song. I like it. Thanks. I wrote it the other day. Oh, that's nice. Didn't realize you were a musician. Yeah, yeah. Swish, swish, swishing my tail back and forth. Pheromones in the tub. Oh, I like those lyrics. Thanks. You're just going to swish your tail on that log for a while, huh? Yeah. That is definitely where your tail was. For sure. I'm going to just check it out for about 20 minutes. Can we just skip to the next morning? Because we have a confirmed lock. This is about 8 o'clock in the morning the next day. That is a lock. And they will stay like that for hours. Just all day long. Sometimes more than a day. I'm sure it's very exciting for them. Okay, you guys, this has been a multi-day video shoot. Um, these two were locked up for about 18 hours, um, which is not very long. They've locked up before. I've paired them a couple times before, and last time I think they were locked up for about 36 hours. So, uh, but 18 hours is plenty long enough. So anyway, I'm gonna put him back in his enclosure. Thanks for joining me, really appreciate it. Kent, do you have any questions? Yeah, I have a question. How long until your house is completely infested with man-eating hellspawn? When can we expect hatchlings? That's a fantastic question. You know, I'm not sure other than to say summer. Uh, I would say probably June or July we can expect hatchlings. Folks, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos from me. And uh, please leave a comment as to what kind of content you would like to see with regard to ball pythons. That's really helpful. Uh, but this is a brand new channel for me, so all of those views and likes and subscribes and comments are really valuable to me, and I very much appreciate your support. Thanks for watching. <laughs>